The letter was heartbreaking in its simplicity. Tormented by the very public breakdown of his marriage to Princess Diana, a somber Prince Charles picked up his fountain pen and poured his emotions onto the page, no one can really understand what it all means until it happens to you, which is why it all keeps getting worse and worse. One day I will tell you the whole story. It is a kind of Greek tragedy and would certainly make a very good play. For a man forced to maintain a stiff upper lip in public, it was a rare release of privately held anguish to a loyal and trusted friend, one who truly understood how it felt to be vilified on the world stage. The letter, dated June 21, 1992, was addressed to My Dear Nancy, better known as former U.S. First Lady Nancy Reagan. Today we can reveal the astonishing personal letters between Prince Charles and the Reagans, which formed the backbone of a friendship spanning four decades that ended only with the death of Mrs. Reagan at the age of 94 last year. At a time when Princes William and Harry have chosen to campaign for mental health issues and this week spoke openly for the first time about their mother's death 20 years ago, the never-before-seen letters from their father to his trusted friends across the Atlantic take on a particular poignancy by showing how Charles, too, suffered emotional turmoil and sought private solace and reassurance. The extraordinary letters also reveal for the first time how Charles was distraught at his Greek tragedy of a marriage, it is so awful, very few people would believe it. He was also disgusted at cruel claims about the First Lady, and heartbroken over the death of the Queen Mother, I have dreaded her eventual departure, she leaves an enormous chasm in my life. The letters vary in tone and are written in the Prince's trademark black ink on crested notepaper from various homes including Highgrove, Sandringham, Burke Hall and the British Embassy in Washington. One is even written at 35,000 feet as the Prince flies home from a whirlwind tour of the US. He captions it in the left-hand corner airborne between Washington and the UK. There is even a small idiosyncrasy, a princely form of shorthand in which a dot above a short horizontal line stands for the word in. His emotions veer from elation and pride, clearly besotted Charles describes how Diana dazzled on the dance floor during a White House gala in 1985, to gut-wrenching grief and despair on the death of his grandmother, the Queen Mother. The letters were part of Mrs. Reagan's private collection which, on her death in March 2016, were handed over to the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Library in Sima Valley, California. For years they have languished in boxes stored at secret warehouses throughout the Los Angeles area and have only now come to light as archivists working for the library meticulously catalog thousands of items of correspondence received by Mrs. Reagan, who was a prolific letter writer. They are being made public thanks to the late president and his wife's insistence that their papers should be available as an historical archive. The full extent of Charles's friendship with Nancy has been known to very few. Joanne Drake, Ronald Reagan's former chief of staff and now chief administrative officer of his presidential foundation, said, President and Mrs. Reagan really valued their friendship with the royal family, especially the Prince of Wales. They shared the ups and downs of their lives and always wrote the other with strong words of personal support, especially if the situation had become public. MRS Reagan was extremely touched that he attended President Reagan's funeral in 2004. She felt a special closeness to him. Clearly moved by Reagan's death, he continues, I so wanted to write to say how much my heart goes out to you. I have minded so much for you ever since your husband became ill with that beastly Alzheimer's as I can well imagine how soul-destroying it must be to be unable to do anything to help as the illness gradually drags your loved one into a separate world from which you are barred. The prince recalls, your husband was always incredibly kind to me and none more so than when we came to stay with you both in the White House in the 80s and you made us feel so marvelously welcome. I shall treasure his sense of humor which shone through everything he did. It was a rare gift and he put it to wonderful use. The friendship deepened when Reagan became president in 1981. In May 1981, Prince Charles, engaged to Lady Diana Spencer and preparing for their wedding that July, flew to Washington for a three-day solo state visit. On May 3rd, airborne, he writes to thank the Reagans for hosting a dinner at the White House the night before. President Reagan had been shot by John Hinckley on March 30 and Charles wrote how honored he was that you should have found time to see me on Friday particularly after all you have been through recently. 
here is a very different side of the future king, at times anguished, funny, supportive, loving. The correspondence shows, for example, how Charles reached out for help during the darkest days when his marriage to Diana was collapsing. He is clearly devastated, not only for his and Diana's sake, but for that of his children, the country and the institution of monarchy, too. It is clear to me as a correspondent who covered the story of the breakdown at the time that his remarks are made in genuine sorrow. They show a sensitive side to him, strong rather than self-pitying. And at times these letters are heartbreaking, especially when he addresses the death of his grandmother, the Queen Mother. He is, after all, a deep-thinking man who cares profoundly about issues, and perhaps more importantly, people. He will always have the good of his future subjects at heart. While his sons, Princes William and Harry, have been rightly praised for wearing their hearts on their sleeves, discussing their own mental health and dropping the stiff upper lip attitude so often associated with the royal family, there is no monopoly on openness or empathy. As these letters show, their father was there first. Too easily dismissed by many, in this respect at least, Charles has been ahead of his time although, Yes, he is a traditional man, a man of his generation. Even in today's world of texts and emails, a handwritten letter is, to him, still the natural choice.